Hi, everyone. Welcome to the One Stop Business Workshop. My name is Diana Chu. I'm a compliance officer at the Canadian Audiovisual Certification Office, and I am your moderator today. Before we, be before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge those Indigenous nations whose lands we live and work on. Since land acknowledgements are specific to each region and we're gathering here today from all across the country, we encourage you to visit the Native Land Digital website to identify the First Nations territories on which you are located. This session is being presented to you from the unceded territories of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe Nation and the Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil tooth Nations. Our presenter today is Prem Gill, who will talk to us about green productions and how you can get started. Throughout this 30 minute session, I will be asking Prem questions that were provided during registration. You can also email me your questions at any time during the session and we'll try to get you some answers. My email address is in your evi for this session. And if you miss anything, do not worry. Some resources, including a video of this presentation will be available afterwards. Now I'm so excited to have Prem join us today. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Creative BC and has received many accolades over 20 plus years in the digital media and entertainment industries, including being named one of Canada's 100 most powerful women and Vancouver Magazine's Power 50. In her current role as CEO, Prem is responsible for delivering a wide range of programs and services that will expand BC's creative economy to reach its creative, economic and creative potential both at home and globally. Prem has also championed Canadian creativity as a representative and spokesperson to the media, the industry and governments at all level, and is also currently on the board of directors of the Bell Fund, a not-for-profit organization whose mission is to support Canadian media content makers in creating for and connecting with audiences here and everywhere. Wow, so thank you so much for being here, Prem. Um, so, We'll begin with this question. I know Real Green is an initiative that has been around in BC for a while. Can you tell us a little bit more about this initiative? Yeah, well, thank you, Diana, for having me here and to the team at CBC who organized this. I know it's been a lot of work and there's been many sessions and everybody who's joining us today. I am on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil tooth people. Like my family's been settled here since the 1960s and we're very fortunate that uh, we've all grown up here in our next generation and our family is here as well. Um, and I am in my office, which we're starting a slow restart of uh, people who are interested in working from the office. So I'm sure many of you are looking at similar things and looking at the restart of the industry and organizations like ours are really here to support you in all of that work. But yes, I'm here today to talk about Real Green. So Real Green was actually established here in BC in 2006. And it was focused on the environmental sustainability of the film and production sector, specifically around physical production. And in the last five years, we've had a very specific strategic planning, reviving that initiative and being very active in establishing protocols, etiquette and training for crews here in British Columbia. And I'm really excited to say that in the last year, the CBC nationally, Ontario Creates and Manitoba Film and Television have also joined and become part of the initiative. One of the key things, and it, we look at it at various levels from what are best practices to engagement and education. And we will also speak a little bit today on, so how do you do this during COVID and during a pandemic when so many things are changing? Um, we are, we also work very closely with municipalities and different levels of government and the establishing of some of the ways that uh, we're doing environmental sustainability and production and, and I know Diana you've got some questions around that, but one of the key things in the last two, three years we uh, that really helped uh, accelerate this even more was that we joined uh, in partnership and collaboration with BAFTA out of the UK and they had established a very specific training program and training tool, a carbon calculator called Albert. And we as Creative BC licensed that tool and program for Canada. And now we have other partners across the country coming on board. And that's really been part of the, one of the key tools in helping to accelerate broader adoption of green production practices. Very cool. Um, so can you talk more about the priorities uh, of the initiative of Real Green? Yeah, it's, um, you know, things that are, um, that we all think about, I think, in our lives in general, the reduction of fuel on sets and really reducing your carbon footprint in the various ways that you're doing that. 
the reduction in meat consumption and what you're doing with your food in general on a production set, the reusing of materials and the types of materials that you use, and just a broader, um, you know, that reduce, reuse, and recycle mantra across physical production. Okay, that's very, that's very interesting. I didn't want to have thought about the meat consumption part, but uh, yeah, that is a very uh, a big component of uh, climate change. So that's uh, mm -hmm. very cool. Um, so what exactly does real green mean and what should a production be doing? So I should have asked this one before. You mentioned some of the priorities, yeah. but yeah. overall, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, well, it means that you actually are reducing the carbon footprint of your production. So it is everything from um, are you using electric vehicles? Um, no idling policies. Um, what kind of food and from where are you sourcing it? Here in British Columbia, we have a uh, what we call the sustainable lockup where productions can donate materials after a show has shut down. So it can be everything from you know the boards, the crate sets to actual set materials. And then they're available to anybody doing any kind of production for free. So you can go and see what's available in the inventory of the sustainable lockup. And, um, you know, especially for some smaller independent productions, which I know many of the people tuning into this are, are probably focused on, you can actually go and get um, set materials. And, and there's a really great video on our website, um, on the Real Green website, that we, we can share all those connections and links to the video that kind of demonstrates some of that stuff and how you can do that. Um, and it really, it's also about education. So part of the uh, BAFTA Albert partnership is the Real Green training program. And we've been made it available during this time online and it's free to register. And this is what the CBC is doing both internally and with producers that they work with. So it's that we all are getting the same education on what we're doing and how to do it and how we're adapting to changing environments and time around that as well. Because the more people that are trained on your crew, it's like anything, um, when you're trying to change culture around a specific thing, it's the same thing around environmental sustainability and physical production, is that you're actually trying to um, have as many people understand the science behind it at the same time. Um, it's similar to COVID, right? Like why we need to socially distance, why we need to wear masks in certain situations. It's actually all based on science. And that's really, we know the evidence in terms of what's happening um, in terms of climate change and the environment and actions that we as individuals and as an industry can take. Okay, so there's all this information and uh, that you've gathered as part of the initiative and all these uh, tips and useful resources. How does Real Green go about um, um, with outreach or engaging people or engaging with producers to make sure that these, these are taking, this is taking place or that they think about this? Yeah, so there's, as I said, the training component, the Real Green training is really critical. And um, here in, you know, BC and in Vancouver, a lot of people, as people know, work in the service production industry. And a, lar a lot of the large studios like Warner Brothers and Disney actually have sustainability people that work in their studios. And they're responsible for ensuring that productions are meeting certain sustainable practices. Um, so they make it a part of their production budgets and their planning. Now, again, I know the scale of a Warner Brothers to an independent production is very different, but actions you can take are very similar. So it's everything from how much paper are we printing? And now in this time when we are looking at, um, you know, we, um, we want to share less paper anyways, because of, you know, COVID and, and the pandemic. So, you know, how much can you digitize? What are you doing with your set materials? Um, what kind of vehicles are you renting for your production? Um, are things clearly marked in terms of where you can deposit certain types of materials? And again, um, even during this time period right now, when you're looking at, you know, we're, craft services is not going to look the same. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. Where are you sourcing the food from? Is it, you know, can it be local and organic and in season? And um, if you're using re uh, reusable containers or uh, materials that have to be, uh, you know, thrown out, are they made out of fibers that are compostable? You know, all of these kinds of things. So um, there's, there's a whole sort of list of how you, would, you could approach a production, but it all comes down to, you know, reducing that carbon footprint. And I think what will be interesting during this time is that, you know, the carbon calculator, which is 
um, which, which hopefully will be launched shortly, actually helps you calculate things like, did you take flights? Um, how many hotel nights? How, many, how much light source did you use? So now in a time where some production work will be done remotely, um, you know, maybe some of the, that will be just, we know mm -hmm. that, you know, obviously our carbon footprints around flying have been reduced drastically for most people and may continue to be for, you know, for the foreseeable future. So it's actually all of those things. We also are fortunate here, and I think you'll start to see it in other places as well, because as the business demands it, suppliers change, is that we actually have suppliers who are supplying LED lights, which, you know, last longer and, and use less um, energy in the usage of them. Um, we have somebody who's come up with a portable electric generator that can be rented here. So, you know, using electricity is better than using gas. Um, and where possible, can you actually plug into a power source? So again, we've been fortunate where in Vancouver, we've had this as a city, there's been a greener city initiative um, to be the greenest city you know, globally at some point. And we actually have power drops now in key locations in the downtown center um, for all kinds of things, special events, uh, but certainly the film industry is utilizing those as well. Um, you know, to, uh, you know, uh, various things around, um, you know, the the idling is something that is quite common in the industry, right? That you leave a truck running and, and whatever else. So it's really, really thinking about all those things. No matter what your budget size, you can actually make some kind of positive, uh, take actions that will have a positive impact. Okay. So you, you mentioned a, uh, a lot of those um um, resources and like the, um, the the renewable energy and things like that. It's very BC specific. You did mention also having um, starting some um, working with Ontario and Manitoba. So real green right now is a BC yeah. initiative. How does somebody who doesn't who's producing outside of BC? How would they tap into uh, these real green uh, yeah. initiatives and resources? So the way we look at real green, its origins are here in BC, but it is available to anybody. Right, and who, who works in production across the country. So there's a lot of resources and the things that I'm speaking to available on the Real Green website, as well as as the courses come online. Now, the uh, intention was that these courses happen in person and in Ontario mm -hmm. and Manitoba, they would start to happen in person. I think the CBC maybe has already done some courses internally and have trained a local trainer to deliver the course. But, um, you know, it's, it was always intended because we've, we've licensed the BAFTA tools for Canada, not for just BC. And, um, you know, and having more partners come on board, the better. So, uh, you know, Ontario Creates and Manitoba and the CBC, um, they will hopefully be sharing the tools and ensuring that sustainability becomes part of every production, uh, environmental sustainability, amongst all the other things that you need to be doing right now. So it's not limited to the tools and the information there. Now, every uh, jurisdiction and province and territory will have their own, uh, you know, resources that are available to them, right? And, you know, I guess part of BC's brand is that, you know, Greenpeace started here. So we know that it's sort of, mm -hmm. it, it, there's maybe more businesses that are delivering things that can be used by the industry here, but mm -hmm. I think we'll see it happen everywhere, right? Because if once the demand is there, you know, something like the portable generators um, or the, the company that supplies most of the rental vehicles for the industry increase their fleet of electric cars, uh, I don't know, like exponentially uh, from having just, you know, a handful to a few dozen. And you may see that happen in other places because the industry will be like, we're only going to rent electric cars for those who rent vehicles for their productions. Um, and the same with the, the catering materials and whatever else. And, and I think you just look at it as what's possible for the scale of your show or your production, right. your web series, your short, your feature, whatever it is. Every, you can do many things that don't require large infrastructure of a large studio behind you just by the choices you make that you and your crew decide to make together on a daily basis. Okay. Yes, because when you mentioned that like Warner Brothers and those big studios have actual sustainability reps, how many of, uh, of us can actually afford to have somebody step in that position full time? Yeah, probably nobody, right? Like it's not mm -hmm. realistic for, um, you know, independent productions, but 
But that's why the tools and the um, ideas available to you through Real Green are, um, you know, think about them and how you can use them and talk to your crew, you know, as you're set, as you're starting a production, um, you know, just like you're going to now be having conversations on how do you maintain social distancing on your set, it'll, it can be part of the same conversation of like, and how do we maintain ent environmental sustainability as part of our commitment, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it can happen in stages. I know there's been productions in Manitoba that have uh, we're doing this before Real Green was sort of an official thing that happened there. Um, and we know a lot of people have been committed to this. And sometimes because of just the size, like your budget is so limited that you are always looking for ways to be more efficient and sustainable anyways. So when you look through some of these lists around reduction and re reuse, you may already be doing it mm -hmm. or yes, thinking about doing it. And you, you touched on a lot of uh, points earlier in the context of COVID about how, yes, right now there's, there's uh, you know, all this require, um, we have new considerations for COVID, mm -hmm. but how you can still think about sustainability uh, uh, in this new environment. Um, let's just take a step back. What, uh, what would you say to those producers who feel they have to make a choice between restarting production um, during this time and trying to still make being green a priority? Yeah, well, I think you can think about what maybe doesn't add to your budget, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, how, what are you doing to reduce the carbon emissions? So from, you know, how far are people driving? Um, you know, how much of your workflow can you digitize? Mm -hmm. um, and there's been some great tools that um, some producers and directors have come up with where you can actually have a digital, you know, script thing where you can change your script and then everybody gets it on their iPhone with the new pages. Um, you know, how can you strengthen your recycling and waste management knowing that you may have more materials and more water bottles or something like that? Mm. Um, is it possible to access touchless things like touchless water dispensers or other things? So there's, I, I, I do think there's small ways, maybe you can't go full on like you'd intended to because, you know, all these new costs are becoming apparent that and considerations people have to take in, um, but it doesn't mean, you know, the types of materials, you know, can you have everybody, when you don't need, uh, in your PPE, when it's okay to have uh, a non-medical mask, you know, are people bringing their own masks that they can go home and wash every night instead of disposable masks, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think once you actually start to sit down and think about it, and even in our own daily lives, there's a lot of little things and little changes because I think we've all been sort of struggling with like, we did all these things, um, you know, like we're back at our office, a few of us here, and we're using more paper towels, right? Because we're washing our hands and not using shared towels like we may have in the past. So, you know, we've set up a special compost bin just for those paper towels that are for the hand washing so that they mm -hmm. can go directly into the compost, right? So, you know, all of those kinds of things in terms of adjustments you can make. I'm talking to maybe other productions on, okay, we've used, um, you know, this set piece and we're going to make sure it's sanitized properly before we return it or lend it to you, all of those kinds of practices, right? And I know that a lot of the, the um, disinfectants and things we're using do have more chemicals than maybe, you know, we'd like. And, and I don't know what the answer to that is yet, but there's all kinds of materials, I think, that we can, uh, and products that we have access to now that still provide that disinfectant, you know, uh, that we need uh, to ensure that we're all safe. Because ultimately, you want to feel safe and comfortable at work, whether you're on a production set or in an office or in a retail store, and all of those mm -hmm. things are extremely important and I think they're the number one priority right now. So it's not, it shouldn't come at the sacrifice of safety. Um, so we're building off what you just said there and you know, that saying about time is money. Um, can we build in like when, um, like a quarantine period with people are like um, lending each other set materials and things like that. If um, uh, instead of like using all the disinfectant could we build in a uh, quarantine period for the set material where they're set aside for whatever the time required before being used? Yeah. Is that something that's feasible or is that something that- I don't know. Time I mean, maybe we have to mm -hmm. see what the public health authorities say around things like right. that, right? So, you know, again, I think, you know, certainly here in BC, we get updates almost on a daily basis from the public health authority and direction on things. 
Um, many of the provinces have delivered safety guidelines specific to the sector, including, you know, BC, because every production and, and every workplace in BC, and I think it's probably the same across the country, mm -hmm. has to have a COVID safety plan. Mm -hmm. So if some of that is, and, and anything, certainly shared tools have to be disinfected, right? So I think it would probably be the same kind of thing. Um, and then maybe there's a period where it's like, yes, and you know, it gets cleaned and then it's left in a neutral zone for 10 days or whatever it is to ensure that everybody feels comfortable around the release of that. You know, maybe it's a chair, I don't know, like whatever it is. Um, but I think those will come with, with, with practice and conversations and, and you know, in wherever you are, like in your local producer group or um, through an organization like Creative BC, find your, um, you know, there's committees, there's, or form a committee. So we have a, uh, what do we, we change the name of it, so I have to look at it here. The, um, uh, well, we have a, a real green committee that focuses, that meets, you know, every month or had been meeting every month to actually talk about how do we continue to ensure more and more people are trained um, in these green production practices. Is that committee, do they also address questions from the industry as well? Like if a producer ha had some concerns about how to implement certain things, is that something that uh, they can contact the committee about? And do they have to be part yeah, of the Yeah, industry? we we have someone on our uh, team here, Julie Bernard, who works closely with um, an organization that's really been a partner in us in creating all of this called Green Spark Group. Um, so both Green Spark and Creative BC, just our websites have a lot of resources and also the fact the Albert website. Um, right. interestingly, you know, these are publicly available. They're not, you know, geo-blocked or anything like that. You don't have to be a member to access this information. Um, you know, the CMPA is a partner here in BC uh, on, you know, Real Green Practices. So if you're a member of CMPA, but yeah, I mean, the, it's, it's, you know, it's always like, how do you connect into the community? Um, and we know there can be barriers for, all, for people to connect into those communities and access is, is critical and important. Um, but, you know, I think that at this point, because we are, we have an opportunity here where we're re-looking at how we're doing so many things, why not build in environmental sustainability practices if you're reinventing a way you're doing things anyways? Mm -hmm. it, it's the same thing around, you know, dismantling um, uh, racism or uh, systemic, you know, uh, racism why not take this time when we're rebuilding so many of our systems and processes and have those conversations and actually understand where we can make meaningful change. I think it's the same thing around environmental sustainability. That's a great point. If, we're, if you're rebuilding something to adjust to a new normal, why not rebuild these principles in your new normal? Mm -hmm. it, it's perfect. Um, Some of these things haven't worked, right? We know that. Okay. I know university panel, but there's, you know, that that is a I think an important conversation as part of this. Okay. Um, do you, so some other questions we have here is um, what are some in this incentives that uh, for production to go green and what are the added costs versus the government benefits with the addition of team members such as Green Monitor? So I guess that's like the, the sustainability yeah. person. Okay. As far as I know, there's no incentives. In anywhere right now. There aren't in BC. I don't think there are in Ontario or, or Manitoba. Um, it is your, I guess the incentive is that uh, in, in the broad, in the longer range in your production, you will have cost savings uh, because of the type of lighting you're using, because mm -hmm. of maybe there's less food waste. Maybe you really take the time to understand how much food is being consumed by your crew and not over ordering or, or whatever that is. Um, we've also, many of the productions here pre-COVID had a food donation program going to shelters and places, food safety uh, being a priority. So really thinking about how do we continue that within this period, knowing that, um, you know, how can food still get donated to places uh, so that just, there's no waste. Um, so yeah, there's, there's no incentive programs other than um, you know, the incentive is, you know, your commitment as a production to, you know, environmental sustainability and to climate change. Okay, so then um, just to clarify on that same note, like real green isn't really something you apply to, it's just an initiative of education and awareness. Yeah. 
Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Our, our goal with the carbon calculator at some point mm -hmm. is to actually have a where you'd get a seal of a, like your production, you know, achieved X through the car carbon calculator. Therefore, you have a seal of approval, sort of like a good housekeeping or better business bureau seal that you could add to your production credit. So that's sort of what the, the hope is that we get to that point where you'd get a real green, you know, seal. And it's some, you know, you have, you can say like, I have my last three productions, um, you know, were sustainable and, and here's the, the best practices and things that we did to achieve them. Well, I know I do look at credits. I don't know because it's part of my job or whatever. Yeah. Whenever I see like no animals were harmed, like, yay. Yeah. 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 So, oh, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, do you have any example, like, uh, look, again, circling back to uh, um, small independent producers mm -hmm. or smaller budgets, do you have any examples of small indie films that use more sustainable practices that, um, that people can look at? Yeah, well, what, what I've certainly heard here locally is with, you know, independent features or even web series is the value of the sustainable lockup in accessing like flats that would cost you, you know, potentially thousands of dollars, but maybe were donated by larger production. So, you know, really being, um, you know, having your production manager or whoever uh, can understanding maybe what other productions are out there and when are they finishing and what materials could you possibly you know access when they're done with them so I think that's been a big big piece for independent productions and I think uh, just the the savviness of um, you know uh, independent producers are so entrepreneurial so I think the use of the digital tools has been really I think it's called uh, it's Zach Lepovsky, it was an app he created, and I can't remember the name of it, but we can send it when we send out materials, but it's basically the script um, app and how to share the pages and things like that. So, you know, I think there's things like that that are accessible for productions. Um, you know, obviously transport is, is another one. Um, how long, what you're doing in locations and what you leave them like after you're done all of those things, knowing that so many of these things are just a big question mark right now, as people are going back into production, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully in the coming weeks and months, um, we know it's going to look different, but all of those things are, you know, small ways, like don't be shy to just, if it's only like one thing you can do and it's going to be around less paper, great, right? Like don't be too hard on yourselves, just, just start doing it and have the conversations with, with your crew and your team. Because every small step adds up to uh, getting closer to the bigger goal. Yeah, and I think we have we have one more question before time is up. Uh, um, well, what's next for real the Real Green Initiative? Can you touch? Well, we hope that yeah, we hope that all provinces and territories will continue to join in, and once the carbon calculator is available, that people will start using it, and and um, that it is becomes the norm. In yeah. production. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody watching today will yeah. uh, go check out that carbon calculator and uh, play around with that and, and realize the difference that they're making and their choices. Um, so I think that uh, that's it for time. Um, and thank you so much again, Prem, for taking your time out today to uh, speak with us and answer our questions. Um, yeah. For our viewers, uh, we hope you found today's session helpful and interesting. And um, if you missed anything, again, don't worry, there will be some more information uh, available after the session. Um, and uh, so tomorrow's session, uh, tomorrow's session is the very last one for the One Stop Business Workshop Series, and it'll cover how to integrate describe video for your content. Accessibility is really important to help everyone enjoy the content that you want to share, so definitely do not miss that. Uh, in the meantime, you can connect with each other on Facebook. A Facebook group called One Stop Business Networking Shop Group has been created for you to exchange information, share ideas, and network between sessions. Um, and that's it for me. Thanks again, Prem. Thank you so much, day. Diana. It was really great. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye everybody.